back to public session. Next is presentation, resolution 20210376. Resolution of accommodation honoring Mita Garb, recipient of the 2021 Mayor's Award, Arts Award. Mita is an exceptional artist and an extremely involved member of Basking Ridge community, not just as an artist, but also through her volunteer work. Whereas the Mayor's Art Awards were created by the Recreation Parks and Pathways Committee and the Parks and Recreation Department to honor those individuals and organization demonstrating exceptional leadership in and dedication to the fine performing arts of Bernard's Township. And whereas in the individual category, the Mayor's Art Award is presented to an outstanding individual, professional, educator, or community volunteer dedicated to supporting the arts of Bernard's Township. Whereas Meta is a talented artist who captures everyday world around, her, around his mixed media, oil and acrylic painting on canvas, which has exemplified through arts, open studio tour, and township annual community arts, as well as in galleries across New Jersey and internationally. Whereas Mita is also a dedicated member of the local arts community, volunteered to coordinate the arts shows for Charter Day and Ridge High School art shows and for several years. Whereas throughout the pandemic, Mita organized many free art workshops for children and adults to help the community reconnect, reduce stress, and foster positive and creative thinking. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Township Committee of the Township of Bernards that we do hereby recognize and congratulate Mita Garb on this impressive achievement and as the recipient of the 2021 Mayor's Art Award. Congratulations. <laughs> A motion and oh, I'm sorry. so moved. Second. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 I want to give my colleagues an opportunity to congratulate you. We just jumped right into that. So if anyone would like to say something. Um, congratulations. Um, I'm a big fan of the arts. I think, it, um, I think it can speak without using words and therefore is so much more an effective way of communicating. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, you're obviously an extremely talented individual and Thank you for all the contributions that you make to our community. Thank you. There's not much else to add to that, but you keep doing what you're doing. I appreciate it. It's good to look at it. It's, good. it's a good example to set uh, for all of our kids and everyone. So thank you for doing this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Congratulations again. Next is public work session. Request for township committee action. Additional street lights for Van Doren Road. Mr. Timko? Uh, yeah, we received a request for two more lights on that street, and it's really a policy decision for township committee. Um, we don't get that many requests, but it does increase the operating budget just a little bit, um, as outlined in the uh, form. So it's really just a matter of what the township committee wants to do. 
Okay. So for myself, further examination of it, um, I don't see that it, it is presently a safety issue. Um, is that correct? Uh, they, the residents on Van Horn uh, feel that it, it is a safety issue. If you walk on the street, it's really dark. Um, there's only a light down at the cul-de-sac end. The rest of it's pretty dark. So what I was saying was your opinion. Because a lot of, I mean, a lot of the, uh, my, my street is as dark as dark. I can't even see. I mean, most of the streets are dark. So uh, a lot of the lights that we have encounter on busier roads are not typically on the side streets and the cul-de-sacs. So lighting would improve the situation, but it's, that street was built in the 60s. So it's been that way for 60 years. Right. So I, I don't know that it's an absolute necessity to put lights there okay it's a pretty quiet street so okay so that was the thing I was thinking um, and the consistency of the lighting is also an issue correct because it would have to change the consistency throughout the whole town the lighting well it's it's one of those situations where if you start allowing lights in certain situations it's going to be difficult to decline similar requests elsewhere correct and after a greater period of time you could have that many more lights we're paying on. Even though one light isn't that expensive, we already have many lights in town and a lot of the older streets don't have them. It's just on the busier road. So over the years, we've denied these requests from my right. office just because we're trying to keep the operating budget to a minimum and not let lights get installed all, all over the place. Um, some people also feel there's light pollution from it and I haven't heard from anybody opposed to it but you don't find that out until after they're put in. Um, right. On this particular street, everybody said they were agreeable to it. Okay, and that's also a cost that would be incurred yeah, it's, for the it's town. Yeah, it's not a significant cost, but we, we don't want a situation where we wind up installing dozens and dozens of lights all over town because then that becomes a significant cost. Okay. Anyone else? Tom, what was the last time you received a request like this before uh, this? I think I've received maybe two in the 11 years that I've been a township engineer. So it really doesn't come up that often. Are there streets in town that you think, well, you know, might benefit more so from additional light as distinguished from this particular street where the request um, There are other streets in town that I could use more lighting than this street. Okay. We haven't okay. done a formal study in any way. Right. I, I think my two cents is, I mean, I understand obviously what the possible ramifications are to the township if all of a sudden we are now expected to put lights up all over the place where there hasn't been any historically. Um, there's a lot of people, I don't know if anybody, a lot of people know this or not, but I mean, we are, I'm personally aware of a lot of people that don't understand what you know what these folks want I mean they're it's a dead end um, there's uh, my understanding is no sidewalk um, you know it's for this specific street obviously it's not you know it's, it's not a, a, an exorbitant amount of money a year four hundred eighty dollars a year but again it's setting a precedent um, you know for the township um, whether or not this is something that would uh, you know that would impact us going forward uh, having said that, and what uh, you know, what, what uh, Mr. Tim Cohen just said, uh, given the fact that he's had two requests uh, in the last 11 years, I would not uh, be opposed to to this. I mean, I understand that all of the residents had signed off, had, had signed off on this. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, all the residents on that street had signed off on this, uh, but. I would not make this a precedent uh, for the township going forward. I would say that if these things come up, we would look, that, look at them on a case-by-case -case basis and say that just because we put them in one place does not mean that, uh, that we can put them in someplace else if it's not warranted. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's my two cents. Um, if, if there are um, residents who live on that street, should we hear what uh, yeah, they I mean, have to say before? 
Yeah, I just wanted to get our feedback first. Yeah, that's that's my initial feedback. Well, I understand. I, I understand what, what Mr. Timko is saying, and, and I, I agree with that. I don't want I don't want this to be to be a precedent for all of a sudden lights going up all over all over every street because that's just not that that's it's not applicable to every street. My street doesn't have any lighting on it, and all of my neighbors love it that way. You know, they they don't want lighting there. Right. I spoke a little. Well, it's, like you said, it is the precedent. Like my street, I don't have sidewalks, and I don't. And I don't have any lights at all. It's pretty dark. And I think that's kind of been the charm of the community is, is very rural and there's not a lot of lights in the town. And if we do for one, we have to do for all. Um, so we always have to, you know, weigh that. You know, if, if it's a safety issue as far as, you know, there's a lot of accidents and, and because of there's no lighting and there's an intersection and, you know, then, then that's a whole different story. But I just, I don't. I don't see it going forward. Ms. Timko, could you refresh our recollection as to how many homes or how many residents live on this street? Uh, I believe it's about a half a dozen. And given that it's a cul-de-sac, it's fair to say that apart from you know deliveries and stuff like that, the people who tend to be driving on this street live on this street. Is that correct? Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's, it's actually fair. eight um, homes. But okay. Yeah, it's, it's a cul-de-sac, so it's only the, you get some visitors, you get deliveries, it's a pretty quiet street all in all. Okay. So are there alternative lighting options? Not really. When we look at street light situations like this, you're either going to put them up long pole, it's, it's about 25, 30 feet up, a typical eight-foot arm that you see, or you're going to have something where like you have downtown where it's like a 10-foot lamp, what we would call a lamp instead of light, where it's more decorative. But as far as lighting an entire area, you put it up high on the pole, and then you choose a particular wattage to get a certain concentration of light down on the road. So yeah, there's really not a lot of options. It's just a matter of paper but, but size. I'm not a street light expert, so <laughs> if these questions sound like that's true, it's because it is true. Anyway, are there street lights? Um, I would imagine the street light you put on a main intersection is going to be different than something you put on a side street, right? Um, is there you get a little bit of difference in the length of the arm. So you can have a six foot arm or an eight foot arm, and then you pick a bulb size basically. So it could be a 100, 200, 400 watt bulb. Right, but so it doesn't have to be the brightest. No, we, there's light. some flexibility in, in what you select in terms of the bulb, but also depends on how much of an area you're trying to light, how far apart the poles are, and, and what you're trying to do. So lighting a sidewalk in a commercial area is very different than lighting something like on Van Dorn Road. Right. So I think it also, if you think about it, it's, it's going to be commercial looking. So if you have this quaint neighborhood and all of a sudden now you have this, you know, not all the neighbors may want that either. You're changing the integrity of the neighborhood with, the, with a commercial big pole and with a light too. So it's going to change the look of the neighborhood too. Well, the, so the that's also something to consider. All the neighbors on the street uh, have said they're interested in the light, and, and basically they're comparing it to the, a light that's already out there. So we would just match the, similar to what's out there on the one pole. Okay. Do you want to, does anybody want to come up? We could do it now to discuss it. Is anybody here from there, from the street? Are you f anyone from Van, Van Dorn? Is it Van Dorn? Good. I'm not from there. Tyler Stein, Riverside Drive. I went down there Saturday night. There's one light, and I understand that light is out. It's at the end of the cul de sac, and that should be the priority to have somebody get on JCP&L to fix that light so it works. PNL was informed of that uh, a while ago by the Public Works Department. Yeah. Well, I was there on Saturday and was still out. So okay. Another phone call or two would I'll be I'll follow nice. up personally. Um, 650 feet, and I'm only going by the paperwork that was provided. I live on a street that's um, nine-tenths of a mile. So that's you know, about 1,500 feet. I don't have a single light. We have no sidewalks. The street is as wide as their street. The street's a dead end. There's eight houses on the street. 
four houses on each side. So if you have three lights, just about every house will have its own light. Um, I think if they were to maybe um, cut back some of the trees a little bit, they would get some, you know, skylight, you know, on a, a, on a night that's well lit. Um, but truthfully, I don't see a lot of people driving down the street unless they made a mistake and they meant to make a turn somewhere else and they were just okay. turning around. Maybe they moved the street sign to the other corner because the street sign is behind, if I remember, it was behind a pole. So you don't see that street sign unless until you're right on top of it. So if they move it to the opposite corner, the street sign would be more visible. So that would help if there's people driving down that street that made a mistake. But the people who live on the street, they, you know, they're their own, you know, if there's people speeding on it, then they know who's speeding on it because they live on that street. Right. And I don't, I'm, I'm into the light pollution. This is a, not necessarily a rural community much more, but it's still considered that. And there's a lot of streets that are dark, as you all know. And once we start, it just goes downhill. Right. Um, plenty of people walk on my street and they have flashlights when it's dark out. Okay. And, which is a, makes sense. But okay. I, Thanks, Todd. I, I think we should save our money. On Thank it. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Pat, should we take a straw poll? Or Mayor, can I ask one more question yeah. of uh, Mr. Timko? Mr. Timko, um, can you tell me if the um, request to install new lights, did that come in after the existing light went out or before? Uh, I believe it was after. Okay, okay. so that's, okay. Sounds like an issue. And I'll call JCP and I'll my, our representative directly to get on that because it should have been, like you said, a request went in and it's not been fulfilled. So, and it should be. Yeah, I, I would get a sense of the body just so Tom has some direction on how to answer. Okay, Joan. So I I would like to see when the light is repaired whether there are further concerns expressed. Um, I think we do have to be careful that um, absent some request because of safety or something um, that is different about that street than other streets in town, um, that we have to take that into consideration. I don't think that necessarily making a decision commits us to putting street lights all over the place. I think, I think it should be dependent upon the circumstances. So. Um, in favor with getting this light repaired to see if that helps the situation and to take it from there. Okay. Andrew? Um, I, I agree uh, with my colleague uh, in that regard. I think we get the existing light repaired and see how that ameliorates the situation. You know, one thing I think about is folks are really not going to understand what it's going to be like with these new lights there kind of until they're installed. Right? And you could have a situation where people are saying, well, you know, I wanted you to put in the light, but not that close to my house or not that wattage or something like that. So I think taking it in steps, getting the existing light repaired and see how that uh, helps the situation uh, and okay. is the way to go. Jim? Uh, fix a broken light, take it from there. Okay, I agree. So let's do that. Let's uh, we'll be in contact. We'll get JCP and out there out there to repair the light, and then we'll speak with the residents and see how it changes or not. Okay. Okay. okay great. Thank you. Next reports. Uh, none this evening, Mayor. Correspondence. None this evening. Next is public comment. Comments are welcome during the public comment period during this meeting on any agenda item or other matters over which the Township Committee has jurisdiction. However, if an ordinance is listed for its own public hearing on the agenda, please hold your comments for that particular public hearing. To address this body, the speaker must come forward to the microphone and state his or her name and address for the record. Each speaker is limited to five minutes. The clerk will keep time. Please promptly yield the floor when your time is up and return to your seat. Your cooperation and adherence to these rules of order will ensure an orderly and respectful meeting. We're open for public comment.
I hope you all remember me. My name is Janet Baker, 31 Newell Drive, currently residing at the Marriott. I am so surprised that after the last time I was here when none of you knew about Newell Drive, none of you knew about my house, and you really should have, because I'm the one that called the township engineer, not you sending him down there. None of you sent him down there, I called him. And he even wrote something in the patch, which was wrong because my house didn't blow off the foundation. It turned out it was actually a 20-foot section of the foundation that blew in. And not one of you came to my house to see what happened. Not one of you came to personally see any of my neighbors, which are here tonight, to see what went on. Mayors in other towns have helped their people. They've approached their people. They've paid for housing for them. I'm out of my house probably until New Year's. $280,000 worth of damage. My lower level, my second level. Nothing from any of you. You should have retracted your statement when you said no one had any significant damage. Go help the people in other towns. What about your town, the town that you run? Nothing. You were more concerned about the mayor's fall festival. I would have loved to have had a donut. I lost my cars. I had no way to get there. Not one of you. I had no way to get to a hotel. I had no way to get my mother to safety. Nothing. Nothing. Not one of you has approached us. Two weeks ago, a little bit of rain. Okay? Street flooded again. People started fixing their houses. Guess what? They flooded again. I have a pot in my driveway with what little furniture I have in it. It's ruined from the flood. It's getting worse. And yet, we keep getting told nothing can be done about it. He was there. I made him go in my house and say, it's totally empty, being repaired. Nothing from one of you. No concern about any of us. Not me, not my neighbors. What's going to happen in the future? I don't feel safe there. I was told, couldn't help you, couldn't get to you. What about the following days? Everyone called 911. 911 calls, yes, they were answered. Responded to, absolutely not. Not the following day, not the evening that they went down, nothing. Not one of you has been there to see the damage that has been done. And I really am disappointed. I am heartbroken. I don't feel safe in my house. You can't get to me? Are you kidding me? Am I going to call 911 again? I don't know. I had to fend for myself the first time, and I got nothing from any of you. Check with the neighbors in other towns what they've been doing for their people. I'm gonna. Uh, I want to say I'm sorry about what happened to you. Yeah, and you know, Where but, were you? But you know what? No matter what I say or the reasons why. It, what transpired as far as our township committee and we have been working with our engineer and I know that he's worked with you and I have been down there so I didn't see you personally. You didn't see the back of my house where all the damage is. I'm on my seventh dumpster in my driveway. That and the pod. That's all you can tell from the front of my house. You never even came. Some of the police came to look. It was boarded up by then by a, a, a neighbor. It's neighbors helping neighbors on that street. Not any of you have helped. I'm staying in the Marriott. You, the police dropped the drunk walk. Dropped the drunk walk. You know the first place he went? To the friggin' bar. The next day, they bring the same drunk back again. My 17-year-old daughter, how do you think she feels? How do you think I feel? She has lupus. I hear you. Okay? To the extreme. Right now, she is going through a flare-up. Stress can send it off. And Mr. Baldessari, I love your wife. She's helped me with things, with a racial problem when she was in middle school. It was a racial thing in this town. I chose not to pursue it because I didn't want any trouble. I kind of regret that now because the, you present this town as so great. You look at everything through rose-colored glasses. Take the glasses off. See your people, all of your people, not your select few. You. Tom, we, we, I don't know. He said there's nothing that could be done about the Was problem. this the Blue Ribbon family you helped or no? Not us. Um, the Blue Acres? I mean Blue Acres, I'm sorry. So why we, we've had um, 
I've met with several people. I've met with Ms. Baker and a couple other residents and helped them with the applications. You went down. Yeah, I went down there. If I didn't read about it in the newspaper, I wouldn't have known about it. No one has approached anyone on our street. Everybody has had to go and find things out for themselves. And we're the ones telling our neighbors about this. Yeah, sir, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, if, if you're going to say something, if you, I, understand, I understand you're emotional. I get it. I can see that. All right? But if you have something to say, come up to the, come up to the podium, so say your name, address. and your comments. All right, my name is Jessica Baker. I live on 31 Newell, or I did. Do you know what it's like to be 17 and lose everything you had? Okay, I have nothing. I'm a senior in high school, supposed to be the best year of my life, and I have nothing. I almost watched her die, and no one came to help us, okay? I watched out my window, and I saw the cops, and not one person came, okay? How do you feel? I'm 17. I'm never going to call the cops again because they don't help me. They don't help us. What's the point? What's the point? It's, it literally sucks. My life is, it just, it makes no sense that this should happen. Back walls of houses don't fall in. And you're, you're supposed to help your people and you're sitting there going to yoga and doing other crap and it's not fair. It's not fair, okay? We've gone through hell and no one has helped us. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I don't know what to say. I mean, uh, the, the, night of, the night that that happened, no one could get down to where you were. That you can do, listen, you can shake your head all you want, all right? My wife is a first responder. I know everybody that was there. Go ahead, just go ahead then, sir. That's your prerogative. Two weeks. Not one response. Two weeks. No one could get to you that night, period. So what happened the next day? What happened the next day? Nobody came. Yeah. No follow-up? No wellness check? Well, We did have the, them. DPW the, went out there. We had the... Uh, no. And sure also the police, and Tom's followed up. Tom's been out there several times. No, think, nobody was out I think there what for Mrs. two weeks. what Mrs. Baker is referring it's, to is, mer in terms of anyone related to emergency responders coming in to do a wellness check, apparently that didn't happen. I'm the one that called the township engineer. No one sent him down there. My 91-year-old mother, I had to worry about getting her to safety. I had no cars. They were all gone. My neighbors lost their cars. Okay. Okay. My neighbors all, right. all got flooded out. It wasn't just me. Okay. Understand. And not one response from any of you personally. We got information from a police officer two weeks after it happened. Well, that was a printout of who to call and stuff. I already called 911. I got nothing. Okay? And by the time I got that sheet, okay. guess okay. what? I had to get that sheet okay. myself off the computer. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, I'm Dan Martocha. I live at 40 Newell Drive. Um, I'm sorry, it was 40 Newell? 40, 40, 40 Newell. Dan Martocha at 40 Newell Drive. Thank you. Um, my house was also flooded. I had about 20 inches of, of water in my house. My, I lost my car. Um, the one thing I know is I've been talking to Tom about this, that in addition to Harrison Brook overtopping, there seems to be a surcharge in our, our stormwater system. I noticed a couple of weeks ago when I was there, um, after the, the brook overtopped, um, it was raining really hard. Um, and after at my street flooded, it got to my curb. And then after it stopped raining, something interesting happened. Um, I noticed a couple geysers uh, within the road. One was within... Um, Mr. Lynn's house um, and another one in, in the actual street. So I understand that one of them is a sanitary line. So there's, there's actually sewage spewing up from a manhole. Um, I know Tom's looking to put in some check valves and stuff, but that, that's a real concern. I mean, we have, there's toilet paper and fecal matter in front of my house. I mean, it's, 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 quite, it's quite disgusting. Yeah. Um, the other thing is there's stormwater surging up from um, a, a vault in front of um, uh, Suhan's house. And I emailed um, a photo to Tom and he was saying there was a surcharge. But, and he said there's nothing we could do about it. But I, I would like to take a look at the upslope network of piping to see there has to be something we could do. Because it's just, I've been there for 15 years. It's never been this bad. Um, and well, it, we, we've never had that volume of rain. No, understood. But a couple weeks ago, we had, what, two, three inches, you know? And, and, it's, still, and it's still saturated. It was five inches a few weeks ago? 
So, and I understand that storms are more severe, but um, it's just, there, there has to be something. No, you're right. There's, you there's know? things that have to be looked at that we have to look at a lot more carefully now, and, and especially with, uh, you know, with what we've been, with what we've been seeing over the last couple of months with the, with the rainfall. So, right. yes, there, there are things that we, that we need to do that we, that we are doing, you know, yeah. and, and we will be well, doing. Yeah, and, and to hear there's, listen, I'm an engineer as well, so I know there is a solution. It, it may not be cheap, but I understand there is, there, there's always a solution. Yeah. Um, so I, I really recommend you guys really look into that. Um, Suan had four feet of water in front of it in his house. And a couple of weeks ago, he had another, he just cleaned everything out and he had another couple inches. Yeah. I mean, I was uh, fortunate I didn't get flooded again. But the Newell Drive is a real, real problem that you guys yes. have to really take seriously. Yeah, yes, it is. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a very big problem. It's on a floodplain. That's, no, uh, that's, uh, understood, you know. understood. But so. again, I've never had water in my house for 15 years, and, yeah. and Ida was a you know 300 year storm or whatever it was. Yeah. But um, well, it, so no, it, yeah, nobody wants it. I mean, right. obviously, you know, when you, one storm can do that. Then obviously, you know, you got to take things into consideration. But, but the, the frequency of the flooding is just a lot worse. Yeah. It, it's more frequent, and it's just it, it, there, there's an inherent problem somewhere. Um, so please look into it. Yes, sir. Thank you. We are, just so you know, we're addressing the sewerage issue, like you said, and Tom is working on. Do you have any comments, Tom, you want to make? Um, it's something we're going to discuss at the November 23rd Sewerage Authority meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And like my colleague said, I mean, is it a, you know, Ida was, hadn't happened. I mean, just overwhelmed all of us. And, you know, this, we, we do understand there, there is issues. It is a floodplain street, so that means it's going to flood. And worse every year. And that's why we we're, we're, we're addressing that accordingly with the township, and, and, uh, with the township engineer, and we're going to come up with the best possible thing that we could do. Is somebody going to have to die because you can't get to them? Ma'am, I'm not going to have this conversation anymore, all right? That's enough. I understand your passion. I understand you're upset. That's enough, all right? Well, this is a public meeting now. Hi, my name is Mary O'Mara. I live at 43 Newell Drive. I've been a resident here for 37 years. I have been through other floods, Irene, um, Floyd, now Ida. I understand we're in a floodplain, but it shouldn't be an excuse that things are getting worse. Somebody's playing around with the back of that Harrison Brook. It used to drain off, and now it's not draining. This nor'easter, four inches of rain, it's never flooded at that point. And it came up with a vengeance. We were within a quarter of an inch of it flooding again. But even the bigger problem is the sewage. That trap or whatever it's called, man manhole, is right at the bottom of my driveway. And it, it gushes out up my house. And it's disgusting. And this shouldn't be happening. And I know you're looking at it. We've met with Tom. Tom says, oh, we're going to look at check valves. Well, you're going to talk about it November 23rd, and then the best thing you can do is maybe in March. What do I do from now? Every time I get an inch of rain, I have to worry that my house is going to flood with sewage again? I mean, you need to put some urgency to this. I know you're working on solutions, and that's wonderful, but just you can't use the excuse you're in a floodplain, so tough luck. It, sh it shouldn't oh, there, be there like that. There's no tough luck, ma'am. I mean, we're, well, it we understand. Like that. No, we're, it sounds we like that's what you're saying. Absolutely not. We understand you're in a floodplain, but there's so some what, things that we what have exactly to do have you done? Ask our, ask our uh, I, I engineer. Can I answer that? So one of the things is maybe we didn't come to your door or knock on your door. We did survey. Personally, we're on the street, but we rely on our professionals to handle it. So you didn't see us, but trust me, we were in constant contact with our first responders to see what was going on there, our engineer, our DPW. That's who runs the town and takes care of it as far as manpower, because we can't do that. So we, we, you may not think that we were on top of this, but we were on top of this. Well, and so we rely on him to guide us. And the other thing is we like solutions with the sewage authority, with the check valve. We're working on it, but it's government, it's taxpayer money. And it's also, a ta you know, we have to make sure that research, government, there's a lot of red tape. So we can't just go out and say, okay, we're going to do this and spend $50,000. No, we have to go out to bid. We have to make sure that we all approve it. We have to have the funds. It, 
it, it, Why are you so angry at me? No, no, I'm, 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 I'm passionate. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm passionate. I'm sorry. Like no, I, I'm sorry if I come here. off. Uh, um, if I come off, I'm not angry. Trust me. I'm very passionate because I feel what you're going through, and I just want you to feel that we have been working on this. May I ask Mr. Bellardo a question? Is there some emergency management system that we could put in effect, not just to help residents who were put out of their home because of a storm? Is, is there well, not? I know you have an OEM, but I'm, I'm not on that, and I'm, I'm not a participant in, in how they deal with storm or other situations. I would defer to Mr. Monaco. So all the programs that have been put in place are usually county programs or federal programs. The township does not have the means to buy properties. Um, I've been here 33 years. I've been here a long time. Newell Drive has flooded. And there were discussions back 33 years ago about trying to involve the feds to purchase all the properties there and, and create a park. Um, it's one of the lowest parts in town. And to Tom's point, if you live on the ocean and you have surf coming in, it's, it's, un, it's almost unavoidable. That section of Newell Drive has flooded for my whole tenure here, and it's a very, very difficult thing to do. Uh, short of Army Corps coming in and doing something similar they did, you know, in the southern part of the county, it, you know, I, you know, I'm an engineer as well, and and I can't think of something that can be done within the means of the township to alleviate that type of flooding. Right, right. I, I understand that, but but I'm more. Here, here's my question. So we have a major storm, and some people are without power or can't use their home. Is there something that can go in effect in town to, to have people go help our residents who are in trouble and get them? And, and I know so like town services, but county services or state services so or something like that. If we're like talking that. about emergency situation and getting to someone in the house, we've, we've used uh, machines to go down Newell in past storms. This particular storm hit so quickly, and I know that uh, the first responders were on the scene. I know that there were, uh, their assessment was that the lights never went on, people had the second floor, um, and to get to them at that point, the decision in the field by the fire chiefs and so forth. So there's that immediate situation. First responders made a call. Uh, Bernersville did have a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a shelter uh, that was open as well, which is very close. It was a county shelter. A lot of these services are county services. Right, so my, my question really is, after the immediacy, right, there's always wreckage from the storm. And I, I apologize because we should have done better. Should have done better. And so here, here's an opportunity to not make the same mistake again. So is there something that we can do to send people to these people's home to, or, or wherever they are to try to um, work with them to get resources? I mean, it, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, you know, short of, you know, uh, somebody knocking on the door, you know, we've done the, the blasts, we've done um, the, the rave alerts, uh, 911 reverse calls. Um, most of the cell phones are linked to that. Um, we've advertised all of the resources that the county was putting in. Uh, short of what you, maybe is just a knock on the door in the future to say, hey, uh, here's a list um, in case you haven't heard. But I mean, the resources are out there, and I think that we've made them public or made them known um, with regard to what resources are available uh, to them. Right. I'm just suggesting that maybe a more personalized, especially since this is a, is a it, it's not town-wide. It's a, it's, a it's a certain number of residents who live on Newell or um, Brook, whatever that can Harrison, Harrison Brook. Harrison Brook. There's a couple so we know, we know, we know who we're we know who they are already. So I'm just, if, if it doesn't exist, I'm, I'm just saying that maybe that's something that we look so that we can institute. Uh, I know. Because storms are coming sure. faster and more frequent. 
and I know OE OEM has uh, accelerated their calls to um, to reverse to that section, Newell Drive, Harrison Brook, and the areas that flooded, to make them aware that flooding is uh, predicted, uh, that the National Weather Service is predicting a large storm. Um, at some point, I mean, I think I, if you know that you are in that situation and you do get an alert, you, you need to vacate the property. I, I don't think that anything that we can do um, resource-wise is going to solve the problem of flooding. And the only thing you can do for safety is to get out of the situation. Newell Drive will continue to flood. The only thing you can do to, if, if, if it's a concern, safety concern, is to be aware that it's coming and to vacate the, the, the premises. Afterwards, with regard to, to services, if it's the type of thing where um, resources are available and maybe uh, someone on the street has not heard of it, is to maybe provide, you know, a, a knock on the door and say, hey, in case you weren't aware, these services are, are available. I think that would be the extent. But also it's important to know that the, the county takes over. So the Office of Emergency Management, which is run by the county, and we have a representative here in town, they take over all that. We, we don't run it. So once a storm comes and something happens, it's, it's out of our hands and we rely on them. They're managing the whole county and that includes our town. So like he said, then we defer to the Office of, the Office of Emergency Management takes over. And it was my understanding that the police, there was police presence there, there was DPW there, engineering went out and surveyed. And I know that, that we had police cars on the street they so. couldn't get down the street. Uh, you know, I think we're talking about two different things here. The one issue is the hurricanes and the Ida's. But my concern right now is the immediacy of four inches of rain and my house was almost flooded again. That shouldn't happen. <laughs> you know, no EOM is going to help us at that point. So, you know, that's what I'd like engineering or whoever does something like that and looks into that to find out. Why is this happening? Well, why has well, it, it is never a flood happened? Plain in the street, so it is going to flood. Excuse You're me? in a floodplain. No, 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 no. I, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about. I understand a hurricane. We're in a floodplain. You get eight inches of rain. It's going to flood. I understand that. Two weeks ago, less than two weeks ago, we had four inches of rain, and we were going to flood again. Can't? Isn't there any emergency or? some kind of short-term plan to fix that so I don't have to worry every time it rains that I've got sewage in my home? I, I mean, check valve, is there anything to do in an emergency, like an emergency check valve can be put in? You know, can there be some kind of approval right. quickly to do something faster than March? Because the issue with the check valves is we'd have to install it on private property and there's legal processes which I'll defer to Mr. Bellaro that we would have to go through to make that happen, including easements and agreements and documents that would have to be signed and approved at public meetings and recorded at the county, so it's not a fast process. So on an emergency basis, there's nothing that the insurance authority can do quickly. Uh, there's too many regulations and legal issues that we have to work our way through, which can be worked through, but it takes time to do that. So that's, it's not something that's going to happen quickly on an emergency basis. And also, Mr. Timko, since it is on private property, there's nothing preventing a private property owner from installing a check right. valve and through we've, a plumber, we've correct? We've pursued correct. that. And in fact, we spoke to some, a plumber, because Tom had mentioned that we could do it ourselves. And we said, well, you know, $1,000, $1,500 to protect our investment at this point, because we're rebuilding. I spoke to someone today who does the outside work or the digging or whatever it's called, and they said it could be up like $7,500. That's um, that outrageous. If they're telling you that, they're gouging you. Well, they said they had to get approval and code approval from the plumbing department, not you, because we mentioned your name. And they said, no, they had to get code approval from plumbing. That's, that's and then they had to put in a pump and a this and a that. And no, they're, they're selling you something you well, how about a resource there that someone could help me when I talk to one of these contractors? Because I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, if these types of things come up, you can go. You can always call me, and you know, you can tell me what you were told, and we can discuss it, and I can give you some advice. So you can call Tom, but right now we are we are we are uh, addressing it with the sewage authority as far as the check valve. But if you want to do it privately and not wait, you can give Tom a call, and Tom will help you with that. Well, that's what I said. We, He's we always have. here. We have talked to him before. 
Yeah, but in, as far as the information you just got from this particular today. contractor today, if something like that comes up again, feel free to call me and I'll go through with whatever they propose to you to try to give you some advice. But they were telling me that you would not be the one that could give approval on that. It has to be the plumbing code yeah, they're enforcers. Wrong. They're, they're, they're wrong. He, wrong. he runs the uh, so construction, the, engineering, and sewer authority. So, so the, the plumbing. This is what I thought. The plumbing yeah. code covers the house. The plumbing code does not cover outside of the house. Oh, okay. So the sewage authority covers what's outside the house. But regardless, the construction department uh, works for me. If I don't know the answer, I'll get you the answer. Okay. Um, and maybe that's a, kind of a partial remedial. Okay, can you well, give us you a list of resources or can you give us a list of contractors? Because you said, oh, well, any plumber you know will what? do it. Not any plumber Tom, will do it. Tom, why don't you take her number down weeks? and give her a call tomorrow? I, he'll I give have, you a call. I have this as a number. Okay, he'll give you a call tomorrow and give you all the, any questions you have or anything else you need or phone numbers. He's, your, he, he's a bright person because he handles all of that. And just the final thing then, can someone go look back behind our houses there used to be valves or whatever that would turn the water on or off the water came up so fast um i walked it two weeks ago you not did. quite two weeks right ago after we talked and uh we were not able to get into parts where i could find any gate valves that um you guys told us about so i, I didn't see any yeah i know you were down by we, well we walked so you around had to come all, up closer to my house we walked in the, in the back there by did. the brook and the way the topography is, it's a case of there's a point when, when the water comes up, it's going to come back into the Newell Drive, and there's no way to prevent that with right. the current topography. It, it just seems like the volume and the frequency of it is getting worse. And well, I know an it additional has, investigation that it's you happened do, twice really this year, it. and I'm under the understanding that the last time it happened was 2011. Is that correct? Or is the major flooding? Yes. 20, yeah, it was Irene, and before that it was Floyd. So, which is I mean, twice in one year is unusual, but it's really only been once about every 10 years. So I don't know if we can really say it's, the frequency is changing or if it's just, just an anomaly. Maybe it is changing. It's, but the it's volume of the water, four inches of rain versus eight inches of rain in a short period of time, which is what the right. hurricanes so are. Did you have to also consider other conditions? So the groundwater table is very high from all the rain we had this summer. There, there's a lot of things that go on that can affect why that floods. We, we did check the stream back there and it's clear. It's, right. it's not like there was blockage or debris or something that caused the backup. Yeah, it's not coming like from the creek, it's coming back off of Lyons Road up. Whereas in Ida, it came off of Mount Airy Road and down. And that's usually the difference. So, Tom, why don't you give her a call tomorrow? Because it sounds like she has a lot more questions. Yes, yeah, that's fine. Right to me. Okay. He'll give you a call. All right. You know, I, I mean, write down your questions, you know, tonight or tomorrow if you have any more questions. And right. he can address them for you tomorrow. I mean, it's just difficult if, as a township committee, if you could put resources together. <laughs> and not the letter that you send out once a year telling us we're in a floodplain. We know that. But some kind of resources like... What are the contractors that we could reach out to? Or we would, well, we, would we don't do a, that. We would have we a do problem that. doing Yeah, we, we can't, can't do that. that. We can't recommend agency. anything. Yeah, we we're. can't pick contractors or sponsor contractors. That's something we, we can't do. We can't say, call these contractors. We get in trouble. If we no, I, I, well, I understand you. you can't solicit, but you know. All right. So, all right. Thank you. All right, thanks. My name is Zhu Hanin. I live in the 37 New Wall. Okay, 37? Yeah, 37. Okay. I moved in that house in 2002. The first few years, yes, I do see a few the, uh, the uh, service worker working in the between, after my backyard and between the, the brook. So that's the first few years I, I saw them. So pretty. I pretty imp impressive, and I enjoy that environment. Uh, I walk around up there, but in the after that, uh, getting have uh, more water and water in 2011. I have a uh, two in two feet in my house. First of all, I don't have the basement, and then after that, I still have a uh, water, but I didn't report. 
until the, this year, Ida come September 1st, I have more than four feet in my first floor. So that is totally, is a lot of dirt and the, the soil back up all dirt and fishes, fecal, everywhere. That's terrible. I spent two, two weeks with my family cleaning up, cleaning up, and I couldn't find the, the worker to help us to, to remove the insulation. I have to work together with all family to knock down the drywall and pull out, and we have to call the dumpster totally four times. And then not too long, in the October 25th, 26th, I saw that the top is raining up, not too big. I, I watch, watch until morning, three, three o'clock. I saw the top is okay. So I went to the bed. But when I wake up, the floor get in my house again, two inch. The first floor. And the car, 12 inch. So that is very easy have water come together on there and the back floor and, and on the street, everywhere. And then they have an eastman in my property. And then I know that the pipe only end my property. After that, there's no way water to go. So that's the, the something water back flow easily. I think we have to do some, something on that. Yeah, I expect you to do something about that. Okay. Thank you. So I hear you about the about the water, but I just want to let you know, as far as the sewage is, that, that's a, we don't handle, the uh, sewage authority handles any of the backup or any issues with that, and I know that they are, uh, they're addressing it. So I just want to let you know. Mike Bart, Annan Road. Uh, we don't get water in our house. Um, sewer is a different issue, but we do have a check valve, but that's, uh, that's a different issue. You know, um, I, I kind of disagree with Mr. Timko as far as the town can't do anything. I mean, water, one thing water is is friction too, right? I mean, I, I made the point last time, I know Mr. Bellardo was the counsel for Warren, but you know, that floodplain, when the floodplain like between Dewey Meadows uh, backs up, you're just, you're just increasing the friction and the water has a harder time going downstream. And I know, I, I don't know if he thinks it's funny, but because I know in my, my property, like of course, Minebrook Road, um, and I think Mr. Monaco uh, kind of acknowledged, they paved the road, raised the elevation. So granted, the water used to go over the road uh, and so when you raise the roads, you're creating weir dams, and then you're flooding people's property. And you go down the, you go down the stream, it's the same way. Like um, even the, the, of course, the, the county is replacing the bridge on uh, Liberty Corner Road. But you know, they, they too, they raise the elevation of the road, and they're just f increasing the floodplain. And then, of course, then they, uh, they increase the friction. Um, and uh, of course, King George, right by the Dewey Meadows, uh, I said before, but, you know, that water was like an inch from the affordable housing. And you look at the water raised. It's kind of hard to believe that uh, the town didn't fight this uh, uh, because, yeah, I, I agree, right? The sewer system is over is overrun, and um, you know. But so if the if the uh, if the planes were dredged downstream, you're going to relieve relieve the pressure, uh, the friction, and the water is going to go downstream. I, I you know I know like we always look for these technicalities. For example, it was years ago, but um, you know when they when they um, capped the uh, Pill Hill with um, 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 with, um, you know, some kind of like uh, uh, rubber coating or something. And uh, I even have pictures. There was a, a telephone pole um, between um, the, the Jewish uh, um, House of Worship and uh, now the king, uh, whatever, the king of kings. And the water used to come up the telephone pole about three feet. It used to come down the hill after they capped that. Um, and so a lot of these problems, you know, we talk about houses in the 60s, and th these problems wouldn't exist because uh, a lot of things were done wrong, um, you know, and um, I know even behind me, on, I think on the Minebrook Farm, the, the planning board, they agreed to remove a berm that was supposed to capture the water. Um, so, yeah, and I, I do appreciate the police coming out a couple times once uh, I called because the sewer system is over, overrun, and, um, you know, the... Um, uh, it's kind of crazy that, that if the town can't uh, handle the sewage, that the town didn't fight the affordable housing on that. Um, and uh, also this last time, I know on Minebrook Road, the water, there's those three, the three pipes up, this, up uh, by Old Coach. And um, 
I mean, I don't know if I have to call engineering like every every other week because now it's you know there's 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 residue or this blockage in one of the, one or two of the pipes, and I know I think um, it was mis misrepresented last time about I know Minebrook flooded uh, this last go around. Granted, the uh, the storm sewers along Minebrook they did have leaf coverings, but even the police said the water was overrunning the road, those those three pipes up there. So yeah, I mean, you can actually install bigger storm drains along Minebrook Road, and you'll keep that from flooding, because then what's happening is coming down to the intersection, and it's going into the manholes for the sewer system, and then it's backing up the whole thing. So um, I, I think uh, if, if we don't have the experts here, I think you need to look outside and find somebody else who maybe might have some different qualifications to look at this independently, because I think right now, I mean, if you're, if you're trying to save the, uh, like $50 on the sewer bill, and I'm not suggesting- well, we don't handle the sewer, so you have to take well, that up with them. I, well, I know, but you said we don't want to raise the cost. Um, but so uh, some of this stuff here- I, I think, didn't say that. We uh, don't handle okay. it. All right, well, I'll-, I'll um, That's addressed at the, that's okay. addressed the sewer. I, I got it. You, and right. I, I find uh, insulting what you said. We do have professionals here, and that's who we rely on. So that comment isn't warranted. Uh, I disagree with you. Uh, you're entitled reasons. to your opinion. Yeah. Yeah, well, if you can't, some of the, yeah, well, if you're, if you're paving the road without milling it and creating a weird dam and flooding somebody's property, I'm sorry, how did you say that? You think somebody's qualified then? I disagree we with that. We have you. an engineering department to handle that, and we take the guidance from them. Um, okay, well, I'll stand with what I said. I think you need to get an independent uh, expert. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, going to close. Hi, uh, Jane Conklin, 110 Spencer Road. Um, I'm not here about the same issue as these people, but I feel very bad and I hope you guys can help in some way. Um, I'm here because I am a member of the Diversity and Inclusion Committee. Um, we had a really nice meeting. It was a, a Meet the Diversity and Inclusion Committee. It was at the library. We filled a whole room of people, township people, all different types of people, um, different political parties, different people with different um, issues that they wanted to bring up. It was wonderful. A lot of people had a lot of really nice things to say and really helpful things that could happen within the town um, that would include diversity and inclusion. Um, as in the committee members asked if we could do a Meet the Mayor series, where we were part of the Meet the Mayor diversity and inclusion. And at the time, um, Mrs. Fields, you said that you wanted us to do our own thing. You didn't want to Correct. include yourself in that, but that you would absolutely go to the thing that we did. Uh, same with you, Mr. Baldessari, you also said that, and Ms. Garshala at the time said it. Um, I was at this meeting when that happened. So we had a very, uh, you know, it was a very productive meeting and I was happy about it. Um, but none of you came and I didn't understand that because to me that kind of indicates that maybe you're not as invested in diversity and inclusion as maybe you say when you're up here. And that was disappointing and that was, it, it hurt a little bit, especially because you, the three of you did say that you would come and you didn't. Thank you. Um, I just find it disheartening that you would think that, um, me personally, I did say that I would go, and unfortunately, the date that it was, I had a conflict, and so I was unable to make it, but we, you did have representation, Joan was there, and um, I did get a full report the next day by the chairman on what transpired, and I did talk to some of the members um, about the event, so um, I apologize that I wasn't there, but unfortunately I had another commitment. So that doesn't mean that I'm not committed to the Diversity and Inclusion Committee. We have a lot of a, a lot of responsibility and a lot of obligations for other meetings and, and also um, to our personal life. So I just want you to know that um, I was there in spirit and, I'm, and um, hopefully I can make the next one. Anyone else? Madam Mayor, I just wanted to round out the discussion on the uh, flooding. Um, I do know that there are a number of people um, who I communicate with who have um, uh, 
donated money out of their own pocket, many of them anonymously, uh, to the bakers to try and assist um, in their situation, which I am highly sympathetic to, along with all the other people who've been affected by this flooding. Um, there's a reason why you have uh, FEMA, why you have the Federal Flood Insurance Program, because the magnitude of flooding problems are that big, well beyond the capabilities of our township committee. I recall um, a discussion that we had uh, where uh, we were talking about potential projects that perhaps could alleviate some of these issues, uh, something that could be executed by, say, the Army Corps of Engineers at a cost of $400 million. Just to put that into context, $400 million represents the entire town budget for a decade. So the magnitude of flooding damage both here and elsewhere is just massive and well beyond the capability of a township with a $40 million a year budget. So I, I just say that to um, demonstrate that uh, there are you know, federal responses, state responses, county responses that are required to alleviate situations like this. And finally, um, I know that in the aftermath of the storm, I had personally uh, driven down uh, Newell Drive I was stopped by a police officer asking if I lived on the street because she was directing people to uh, resources that were available, et cetera. So uh, I personally witnessed our police officers responding to the circumstances in the aftermath of the storm. So thank you. Thank you. Can I say something? Please. Those police officers did not show up after one, till one week after the storm, after I went down to the police department and informed them of people driving back and forth across the street, back and forth, looking at what people were trying to salvage. That's when the police department figured out that something happened. One week, took one week. I'm gonna disagree on that. That's not the report that That's we received. That's what I'm talking about. There was no response to the 911 calls. Not one. Anyone else? I'm going to close public comment. Township Committee Board Liaison Reports and Staff Comments. Mr. Bellardo? None this evening, Mayor. Mr. Baldessari? Uh, none this evening, Mayor. I just want to, uh, just one final comment to Ms. Baker. Um, you know, I, I can't imagine what you're going through, obviously. I mean, you've been through a lot with the house and everything, but uh, you do have uh, my uh, promise that I will uh, find out a little bit more in the OEM area and what we can do, and I will be uh, a little bit more involved to see what, what it is that we can do to more specifically help our residents down on Newell or Harrisonbrook or any of those very affected areas uh, like, like anything else. Uh, I, I believe I'm going to echo with... Uh, my colleague Jones said is that uh, you know we can we can always do better we can always try to do better so I'm, I'm so I'm listen we, we I, I have no doubt of anyone on this day is his concern for every single one of our citizens here uh, I'm uh, yeah, the last that's, time I was here I told you we felt like we're we're our own community I, I, I understand ma'am I understand but that's that's my commitment going forward I'm going to get more involved in that I'm going to let you see it. That's all, ma'am. Mr. Monaco? Uh, nothing this evening, Mayor. Thank you. Rhonda? Nothing for me. Joan? A few things. Um, the Board of Health is continuing the vaccine program. Um, Pfizer vaccine boosters or for children 12 and over will be given on um, November 9th, 16th, and 30th, and the Moderna and J&J &J vaccine um, schedule is November 10th and 17th. So if you are in need, please um, check the Board of Health website and you can sign up. Um, the Environmental Commission had the pumpkin smash at Dogwood Farms and English Farms. It was a smashing success. Mm -hmm. And we wanna thank Dogwood Farms and English Farms for hosting and encourage 
um, our residents to go because it's a, it's a great place to spend a day to pick up some apple cider, et cetera. Um, the Diversity and Inclusion Committee did have a meet and greet at the, um, res at the library. The room was filled. Um, one gentleman said he was in, um, and he thought he was in the minority, and so he left his MAGA hat at home, which everyone <laughs> laughed at, and it was a really nice event. Um, people had some really great ideas, and we hope that um, we can continue that. Uh, last but not least, I want to congratulate Andrew McNally and Jen Assay for their win in the election, and I wish them all the best. I also want to commend Sophia Chatta and Jessica Simpson-Cook on a uh, campaign well run. Um, I also want to acknowledge uh, Bernard's Township resident, Elizabeth Grainer, who ran for the um, New Jersey District 21. She was not successful, but she gave it her all. And Bernard's Township um, uh, has, has a really strong um, <laughs> champion for, um, for serving her community. Um, I'd also like to congratulate Chanel Robinson and Sarah Suey on their reelection as Somerset County Commissioners, and of course, last but not least, Governor Phil Murphy. Thank you. Thank you. Andrew? Nothing this evening, Mayor. Okay, before I get into the, um, the, um, the board's reports and the announcement, I do want to say, Mrs. Speaker, that um, we are compassionate, and sometimes we're only as good as the information we receive. I did apologize before I'm going to say it again. We're not going to go back and forth again. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to extend and all of my, and say to you, well, as good as the information we received, and w I know that we were all working on this, and that the disconnect came from I didn't personally knock on your door, and I apologize for that. But I was on the road, and, and everyone in here was working. So going forward, make sure that you get the resources that you need and that we talk directly and also I didn't know that there was a fund to help you out so if you want to give me the information like Andrew said he donated uh, to help and I would I would like to contribute to that also I just want to feel safe in my town that's it I hear and you I truly do not feel safe here we okay So I too want to congratulate Andrew McNally and Jennifer AC on their uh, on their win. We're looking forward to working with them, and um, again, congratulations. Also, uh, Board of Ed members that were elected, I want to congratulate them too. Um, our assembly and assembly folks, and uh, you know, up and down the ticket. Congratulations to all um, new hires. Andrew Burkari for the DPW Roads. Uh, working foreman, I want to uh, welcome him aboard to our family, and uh, Lisa Fortunato, administrative as uh, associate for the tax collector's office. Uh, again, welcome to our family. Dear Commission, uh, they're getting ready for the uh, upcoming season, busy as usual. Uh, Farmstead, they're offering their online classes, so please visit farmsteadartscenter.org for information. Uh, the Liberty Corner Firehouse, almost sold out. I just picked up my tickets. On Saturday, November 20, November 20th at 7 p.m., they will have will be having their biannual Common Night fundraiser. It's a lot of fun, so please come out. Like I said, it's almost sold out. It's a great way to support them. Um, their fundraising is down 33% this year because of COVID. So it's a great way to give back to the uh, Liberty Corner Firehouse and have a really good time. So you can go to libertycornerfire.org backslash comedy to purchase tickets. Sorry. Oh, there it is. The Utilities Task Force. Um, the Township Committee has just received the Utility Task Force 2021 Bernard Township Resident Internet Survey results. They will be providing the survey results to Optimum and Verizon and intend to make the document available to all other interested parties. And also on our website underneath the Utilities Task Force, you can find their report. Um, next month, they will be providing us and submitting a uh, 
their second report that's due to us, which is their end year end report with their recommendations uh, to the township committee on what we can do for the utilities. So it's been a very productive year for them and I'm really proud of them, the work that they've put in and, and they've talked to every utility that we have here in town. And Todd's here tonight, so thank you Todd for your service um, and uh, found some really great solutions uh, for our community. On Sunday, I wanna thank the uh, Parks and Recreation Department for coordinating and run running the Field of Honor program. Uh, it was a wonderful event. So many people turned out and it was beautiful to see the flags. And I also wanna thank Jen Gander and the Parks and Rec Department especially because the Beautification Task Force started this Field of Honor and when it was disbanded, um, Jen and her department stepped up and continued it continued the tradition, and it's a beautiful tradition. So I really want to uh, thank her so much. And unfortunately, I forgot to thank her on Sunday. So huge shout out. Thank you so much. Appreciate all that you and your department do, um, do for Bernard's Township. Also want to thank the VFW Post 858, Basking Ridge Girl Scouts Troop, Ridge High School Marching Band, uh, and, and Community Hope for participating in the Field of Honor. Uh, last night was Meet the Mayor series uh, where we had the Basking Ridge Business Alliance. Uh, they gave a spectacular presentation on all that they do for our community, for, uh, for the business community, which is pretty extensive. Um, it was also special that they made a special point of thanking us, the Township Committee, for all that we do to help them, their organization, and help the business community. And they appreciate the great relationship that we have with them and how we're always there with them and partnering with them and helping them. Uh, means a lot to our business community. And they especially acknowledge the fact that we helped them a lot during uh, COVID when um, things were a little bit rough for business community. Um, next is the uh, meet, next Meet the Mayor series on Monday, December 13th at 7 p.m. here at Town Hall. Our guest speaker will be you, the residents of Bernard's Township. It will be holiday traditions around Bernard's Township. So come out on Monday, December 13th and share your cultural family traditions with us uh, while sipping on hot chocolate and uh, nibbling on some chocolate chip cookies. You can also email me your tradition or cultural uh, holiday stories, which we will read at the event, which you can share, uh, you can share them with us by emailing me at jfields at bernards.org. So it should be an ex uh, interesting event. There's so many wonderful family stories and traditions that many people do throughout our community um, for the holidays. So. We're all looking forward to hearing them. And the Bernards Township and Basking Ridge Business Alliance food drive will end tomorrow. Uh, the Basking Ridge Business Alliance and myself will be dropping off the food donations on Thursday to the food bank of Somerset County and, and Boundbrook. I want to thank our community for their generous donations to help support so many families during the Thanksgiving season and beyond. It's been a great partnership with the Baskin Ridge Alliance and I wanna thank them and their members, and especially those who dropped off, were a drop off point for, for our community. And I too wanna to say on Friday, I attended the uh, Pumpkin Smash, which was hosted by the environmental and at the uh, Dogwood Farms. It was so much fun to see the kids smash the pumpkins and see the pigs eating them and then fighting over the, the pumpkins. So it was, it was a wonderful, um, event by all, and thank you, Joan, and your committee. It just was fabulous. Mayor, if I may. Um, sure. Remiss, uh, on behalf of Jen and I, I'd just like to thank you, uh, and committee woman Harris, for your kind words, um, and Jim and Katie have said the same to me offline as well, so I just want to say thank you. Welcome aboard. Fire and rescue appointments, Rhonda? None this evening. We don't have any unfinished business? No. New business, consent agenda. The items listed in the consent agenda portion of the meeting have been referred to the township committee for reading and study. A copy placed on the website and are considered routine. They will be enacted by one motion of the township committee with no separate discussion. If separate discussion is required, the items may be removed from the agenda by township committee action and placed on the regular agenda under the new business. Would anyone like anything removed from the consent agenda? Seeing none, can I have a motion? I'll move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Second. Discussion? Roll call, Rhonda. Mr. Baldessari? Yes. Ms. Bannon? Yes. Um, Mr. McNally? Yes. Mayor Fields? Yes. Motion carries.
Can I have a motion to approve the minutes from the open session on 10-26-2021? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Next is public comment. Title Stein 172 Riverside Drive. Um, there'll be two things. First thing that I just want to mention that utility task force meeting has been changed to the 22nd of November because of Thanksgiving. Hopefully we're going to get somebody from Optimum here. So anybody who has, you know, a problem or want to question them, I would suggest you try to make it to that meeting because I'm hoping that I'm aggravated enough to um, go after them. And if I'm not, hopefully somebody else will be aggravated enough to go after them. Um, I did have a lot of other things, but with what happened tonight with the discussion, I think what I have to say really isn't as important as what happened on Newell Drive and um, Harrison Brook and stuff. And um, it is not a reflection to the, the committee because I know, I personally know the committee can only go so far with what they can do. I, I know in the town I grew up in, in West Orange, we had a welfare department. So if something happened, the police department would call them up if somebody needed a place to stay for the night and stuff, like we put them up at the Turtle Brook Inn or something like that. And that's like an immediate problem, but we're talking about a long range problem we have here. And we know in the state of New Jersey, with the flooding down in the south by the shore, people were required to build a house as one flight up now. They're on pegs. And, you know, it may be something that we're gonna have to look at here. I don't know how, if it's through local planning or um, I zoning. Can, I can respond to that right now. Is that state? We have an ordinance that sets a threshold on that, but there's a certain amount of damage, it ha structural damage that has to happen to the house. and. It's against the value of the house. So Basking Ridge homes obviously are much more valuable than say a house in Manville. So typically you have to pretty much destroy the house, almost level it to get to that threshold where you'd have to raise it. But we do have an ordinance required by FEMA to raise a house under certain circumstances. Okay. okay. Well, besides that, well, I'm really coming to the point is, is that I think I'm um, coming to the new year in January whoever takes over, should think about having a task force that relates to the flooding. I don't mean just, you know, emergency management thing, but they would be included. But really study this and see what type of options we have. Not that we're going to start buying, you know, um, major equipment to start digging street stuff up, but a direction that we could go to help out people. Not, you know, how we could direct them, how we could make our infrastructure better, if we could, if not, who we could talk to. But, I mean, a task force, because the task force would talk about this. It's not something for the meeting. We don't have the time or the energy or the people here to do it. But I think a task force with a group of people who are familiar with that engineering, construction, and emergency management skills and stuff like that. Like, when we have something like that, where do we, you know, can we send these people? I mean, sending to Burnsville, it's kind of embarrassing that we have this school here that, that won't open the school up for an emergency where we have people, you know, with beds and stuff. And that's a, a problem. That's not I don't up know. to us, Todd, just so you know. I'm that's sorry? run through the county. They decide on the shelters, well, just so you well, know. I don't think we've ever volunteered either. And I'm not. That's not necessarily true. I just don't want you giving misinformation. No, well, I'm, it's not misinformation. Just like we, we, we just don't have it there. But anyway, I'm just saying, if we have a task force that we have people, and, and we study this and we see how we can help. So the next time we have the flooding, and it's going to continue on, which way we could move and who we could go by. And, and that's all I'm saying. I mean, it doesn't cost us anything to have a task force to look into this okay. and see what goes on. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Jane Conklin again. You have her address, Rhonda? Yeah, 110 Spencer Road. 
I'm sorry, what was it? 110 Spencer Road. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to bring something up that I've noticed uh, at this meeting and at other meetings. And I can tell you, I come here and I'm nervous every time I stand up here. You can probably tell that. Um, I think, um, as the mayor, you hold a position of power and you, um, people come here and I don't envy your position. They come here very emotional. They come here with, you know, things that are upsetting them and that they need help with or that they would like to be heard. And I just feel that if you maybe think a little bit about your communication style rather than actively defending, maybe at times actively listening, I hear you cutting people off as they're getting more emotional. Maybe you're trying to stem the, you know, them getting too upset. Um, but, but you're the mayor, and I think it would be helpful if people could get the impression that they were being heard. And sometimes I think just stepping back and, and not cutting them off and just not necessarily defending yourself and just hearing what they're saying would go a long way. Thank you. Anyone else? Mayor, I think that um, uh, you have made residents feel heard and uh, you've always conducted all of these meetings very effectively. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. Thank you, Andrew. Anyone else? Okay, I'm gonna close public comment. Executive session seeing none, can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everyone, thank you.